Hello class. So today we will do the second chapter of set straight lines, straight lines 2. So we will build some more concept on straight lines in this chapter uh, before we move on to the pro to solve some problems. Okay, so let's dive in. Okay. So first that what we will cover is so so last day i expect you know the basic forms of straight lines straight line equations which is like y equal to mx plus c uh, so these equations i expect that you already know because it was discussed yes last day so just a brief summary very quick one So y equal to mx plus c, then y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. This was also discussed. Then slope in, then intercept from x by a plus y by b equals 1, right? This was discussed in the previous class. And I also expect you to know if, if you know two points of a straight line, then what will be the equation of the straight line? It will be y minus y1 divided by y1 minus y2 equals x minus x1 divided by x1 minus x2. And the last form was normal form, which was x cos alpha plus y sine alpha equals p, where p was the shortest distance, which was perpendicular from the origin to the straight line basically which was perpendicular to the uh, straight line and alpha was the angle that it made just i will just show you what was p and alpha if this was a straight line from this origin this straight this perpendicular line the distance was p and it made an angle alpha with the straight line so we covered these things uh, this kind of equations the the different forms of equations of a straight line so basically if we have the parameter y and c we will use this form of the equation to get the equation of the straight line if we only know m and 2 and 1 coordinate x1 y1 then we can use this equation to get the straight line equation this form to get the straight line equation similarly similarly based on the parameters we will use a different form of straight line to get that equation so this was one thing that we discussed and we then we discussed uh, what what will be the distance between two points x1 y1 and x2 y2 what is the distance between these two points so we saw it from pythagoras theorem x2 minus x1 square the distance d plus y2 minus y1 squared right so this was the other thing that we discussed last day and and then we saw if there are two perpendicular straight lines with slope m1 and m2 let's say this is perpendicular the slope of this line is m1 the slope of this line is m2 then m1 times m2 will be minus 1 okay so i'm i'm, I'm going very quick this is just a brief summary of what we discussed in the previous class so that everyone is on the same page before we move on to some new topics of straight lines and the last thing that we discussed was let's say in a coordinate system we have a straight line like this uh, two of the points was p let's say this is x1 comma y1 and there is another point q which is x2 comma y2 and internally let's say there is a point a which is which is x comma b and internally it is dividing p and q in the ratio m times n m is to n okay then what will be x comma y so x will be m x2 plus n x1 divided by m plus n and y will be m y2 plus n y1 divided by m plus n so just want to add one more thing I didn't I, I don't think I discussed in the previous class so this is internally division so if it is externally divided 
let's say the instead of the point b a being between these two points p and q so i said this is p this is q and this was a in the previous a was somewhere between p and q in the previous discussion right let's say not it the p this time a is this time is here x y and it is dividing this in the ratio m and this is n in such case is the same thing the you, you can derive it the same way you will derive this uh, that is a with the, by the distance uh, equation and this is x1 comma y1 i will just write the result here because it's pretty simple to derive just some mathematical uh, expression you have to arrange some mathematical expressions to get this uh, formula which is x here will be m this m times x2 minus this time it will be minus then n times x1 divided by m minus n and y will be similarly m times y2 minus n times y1 divided by m minus n so this was i just this is to give a very brief summary of what we discussed in the previous class so let's now move on so we will cover a new topic today yep so oops, sorry so let's say this is a straight line here so there this is a coordinate axis x y and we have two straight lines which is the first is this straight line and let's say that we have another straight line like this and this is making an angle theta 1 this is making an angle theta 2 both with x axis so if this is theta 2 this is theta 1 what will be this angle so obviously if this is theta 1 and this is theta 2 then this will be theta 1 minus theta 2 right and let's say this theta 1 the slope of this theta 1 we already know this is this is m1 oh, not sure what's happening okay and this is m2 okay and this straight line where which is making an angle theta 2 with the x-axis we already know the slope is m2 then let's say we need to know what is this what what will be the angle between these two straight lines okay that what will be the, we want to know what will be the acute angle between these two straight lines and what will be the obtuse angle between these two straight lines you know right acute angle is 0 to 90 degrees acute and obtuse is 90 to 180 okay just very quickly acute is 0 to 90 degree is acute angle and obtuse is 90 to 180 degree okay so we want to find both like if this what will what is acute angle between these two straight lines and what is obtuse angle so let's say for this angle we want to find which is tan theta 1 minus theta 2 so from uh, triangle uh, trigonometry we already know tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2 in case you don't know we will cover this in uh, in trigonometry for the timing the you just can note down the formula tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2 is very standardized is tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2 divided by 1 plus tan theta 1 times tan theta 2 so this will be tan let's say theta 1 minus theta 2 is equal to phi so tan phi equal to so tan theta 1 we already know m1 is equal to tan theta 1 right because m1 is a slope of this first m1 is a slope of this uh, straight line which is making an angle theta 1 so m1 will be tan theta 1 and m2 will be tan theta 2 okay from the basic definition of slope which we discussed last class so here tan theta 1 will be m1 minus tan theta will be m2 divided by 1 plus m1 times m2 okay so you see since this is an acute angle so this will be this number should come out as positive and 
this one since it's an obtuse angle this should this if if any case if we want to find this angle then what will be this angle this angle will be theta 2 minus theta 1 so basically and let's say this is phi dash so here tan phi dash will be m2 minus m1 plus 1 plus m1 m2 and obviously this two this two straight lines should not be perpendicular to each other otherwise m1 and m2 will be equal to be minus 1 and then this will be equal to be 0 so we do not want this expression 1 plus m1 times m2 equal to 0 because you don't want the denominator to be 0 then this becomes 90 degree basically uh, so the distance between two straight lines for the acute angle it's m1 minus m2 by 1 plus m1 m2 and the other one is m2 minus m1 by divided by 1 plus m1 m2 so it's better what we do is we find the modulus of m1 minus m2 by 1 plus m1 times m2 so from the modulus whatever phi we get if phi is between 0 to 90 we understand this is acute or else it's obtuse right so so because because since the sign is changing here it's m1 minus m2 and it's m2 minus m1 so better to do get a modulus and get this expression and and if we can get this expression then tan phi we can we can find what will be the angle phi and if it is acute we already know it should be 0 to 90 so this is the first concept that I wanted to discuss which is like angle between two straight lines. Okay, now let's move on. The second topic that we will discuss in this class is what is the area of a triangle if we know the three coordinates of a triangle. Three coordinates of a triangle, what will be the area of that triangle? What is area of a triangle if three coordinates are known? Okay. Let's say this point is A, and you know the point, the coordinate as x1, comma y1. This point is B, and you know the coordinate as x2, comma y2. And another point C, you know the coordinate as x3, comma y3. So what will be the area of this triangle? So this is a pretty standardized formula. Is there? I won't go to the derivative for this one. Uh, you can, you can. The area will be like half into determinant of x1, x2, x3, y1, y2, y3, 1, 1, 1. For those of you who have not covered determinants yet, it's fine. You need not remember this expression. The I will just write the other expression. The what will be the value of this determinant? That once you cover determinant, I think it's easier to remember this form. But uh, let's for for those of you who haven't yet covered determinant, we will cover it. Uh, but for for the time being, let's say this is half. A, 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 and one more thing, this area is never negative, right? Area is always positive, so it should be modulus. First, I will let me write the equation. It is x1 times y2 minus y3 plus x2 times y3 minus y1 plus x3 times y1 minus y2. And this will be modulus of an entire expression should be modulus, should come out as positive. So this is the area of a triangle when you know the three coordinates of that triangle. Okay. So this is also a pretty important expression that we need to know. There are times when three coordinates will be given. You need to find the area. That will be a pretty straight problem. But in other cases also, 
you might need to find the area as a part of a bigger problem so yeah so let's move uh, now we will cover the third topic that we will cover here what is the distance of a point from a straight line distance of a point from a straight line okay let's say this is a coordinate axis x y with the origin 0 let's say you have this straight line okay and this straight line equation is the general equation which is ax plus by plus c equals 0 okay and you have a point here p which is h comma k now your task is to find what will be sorry what will be this perpendicular distance sorry it little bit <laughs> it's getting messed up so i just wanted to know this perpendicular distance from p to q let's say this is r and s r is intercepting the y axis and s is intercepting the x axis and you need to know the perpendicular p q which is which is making a perpendicular 90 degree with this straight line L. So here, so first let us find out what will be the value of R. So from this equation of the straight line, we already know what is the intercept form. I already discussed previous in the last class, also summarized in this class, it should be the form of X plus X by A plus Y divided by B equals one. So from this equation, ax plus by plus c equals 0 so we can see ax plus by equals minus c so if we convert it like this c by a plus y minus c by b equals 1 so you see this equation is of the form x by a plus y by b equals 1 right so here the x intercept the abscissa will be minus c by a and ordinate is obviously 0 and for here the abscissa is 0 and the ordinate is minus c by b now if you see let's say this is an triangle ah, what is happening i'm sorry so this is a triangle which is p r s so for triangle p r s let's say let's let's look deep into this triangle prs so what is the area of this triangle area of triangle prs it's like half into base is like rs into height is like pq so we want to find out what is pq okay so we already discussed in the last uh, like just few minutes back what is the area of triangle prs so let's go there area of triangle prs when you know three coordinates it will be half times let's say uh, let let me write it like the same way x1 is 0 x2 is minus c by a x3 is h and this is minus c by b this is 0 this is k this is 1 1 1 and this is a determinant okay so from here we will get half times is minus k plus minus c by a times k plus c by b plus h times minus c by b so this will give me and this half is outside and all should be in a modulus okay so i haven't written the modulus yet first let me just solve it uh, so minus k this is okay let's so this is fine right uh zero minus c by a h minus c by b 0 k and 1 1 1 okay 
so that's what I was thinking it looks a little bit odd because I multiplied with 0 so this first expression should not be there I'm very sorry 0 because 0 if it's multiplied with 0 obviously the first expression will cancel out so what we get is like uh, minus c by a okay let's let's leave it at this and there is a minus sign we can take care of the minus sign out because it's a modulus so so for us let's just say half times c and you have 1 by a k plus c by b plus h by b let's say this expression we have okay and you see from here area is equal to half into pr into half into rs into pq so we can we can just simply get from here i'm just writing here okay so 2 into area 2 times area of triangle prs equal to rs times pq so what so 2 times area is what you, you can see this expression so if you take 2 in this side you get c times this so it is like c times 1 by a times k plus c by b plus h by b okay and rs what is rs rs is distance between this point and this point so let's find out rs here from the uh, you know if it, if you know two points what will be the distance y to x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared so it is minus c by a squared plus minus c by b squared so equals root over uh, c square a square plus so c we get outside it's not yeah so just i put c outside it is 1 plus a square plus 1 by b square from here we get c by a b outside and if you just add this you get this c by a b divided by a square plus b square so here you see so we will get here c by a b times a squared plus b squared equal to what is that pq okay so we cancel c and c so from here let me draw this line so just okay so here pq equals if we just add add all multiply all this it we will get k by a okay we will simply get this k by a plus c by a b plus h by b equals 1 by a b oh, sorry 1 by a b times a square plus b square equals a b it will be b times k c plus a times h divided by 1 okay a b and a b is getting cancelled okay you see if you just uh, do this calculation you will see a b and a b is getting cancelled a square plus b square so we will we, let's go to the other so so keep this in mind we got this form so this is a form that we need to remember basically so i will just draw here again one more time very quickly x y and this is a straight line this is the point h comma k and let's say this is p and we need uh, what we did say q okay so q so right now we are finding p q so what did we get here we get a h this form this is i'm what i'm discussing here this one a h plus b k plus c divided by a square plus b square and this equation line is a x plus b y plus c equals zero so what we got a instead of x we write h we got b instead of y we write k c is as c same and then equals yeah root over a square plus b square this is pq okay 
okay so we need to remember this uh, this is called distance of a point from the straight line this is pretty important we will use it in problem solving uh, so if this is a straight line which is ax plus by plus c and you have a point p a h comma k just replace the x and y with h and b and then the expression will be h plus b b k plus c and you divide this by this a square plus b square okay we will we will we will use this pretty in in many of the problems so it's better to keep this in mind so the next topic that we will cover today so let's say we have two parallel lines okay so line 1 l1 let's say this is of the form ax plus by plus c equals 0 so what will be the other line l2 which is parallel to l1 so the other line will be of the form ax plus by only the y intercept will change c dash equals 0 so this should be the equation of the the form of the of a parallel line to ax plus by plus c so if you ask me why it is like this okay you might ask me like why, why the a and b are same coefficient of x and y are same and only c is different so it's basically if you know like uh, let's say this is a coordinate system and you have here a straight line with m1 slope okay so the to to make this parallel to this straight line with m1 slope the other parallel line also should have a slope m1 wherever it is the slope, let's say this line if it's if it wants to be parallel it should be m1 this line it should be m1 because the angle that it is cutting the y axis right all should be same because since they are all parallel so this all should be theta 1 and this every all this slope should be m1 so basically if you come back to here what is the slope of this straight line so the slope here equal to minus a by b right because you know y equal to mx plus c i already discussed that form so if you convert this equation to y equal to mx plus c equals 0 then you will get m equals minus a by b uh, let's let me just do it for some people who might not understand but it's pretty simple actually x plus by plus c equals 0 so implies let's say you take you keep b here and you take both ax and c in the other side so so here y equals minus a by b x plus minus c by b so the slope here will be this is the slope minus a by b okay so for the same way if you do the slope here let's say the slope here is m dash you will get the slope here as minus a by b so that is the reason why the coefficients of x and y are same so only y intercept will be different here c which is why it's like c by b and it's like c dash by b so basically you see only the y intercepts on of these parallel lines are different but the slopes are all same so okay so two parallel lines if it's like ax plus by plus c equals zero the other should be ax plus by plus c dash equal to zero okay and and i already discussed the yesterday if it's perpendicular lines what what's the condition i'm just writing it here if it's perpendicular lines so it's m1 times m2 equals minus 1 so basically you have to find the what the m1 for one line and you have to put it in the uh, and make sure the slope of the other line should be such that m1 times m2 equal to minus 1 there is a form to it but i'm not discussing it right now but uh, i mean I, I i might go it into in, in the next classes but i will just for the timing give you a very brief it's like if ax plus by plus c equals 0 you need not remember it actually since because i already told you the perpendicular this you need to remember this condition this is very important for perpendicular straight lines so if this is the line l1 so its perpendicular line l2 should be bx 
so the coefficient of x you have to just write the the term b which is a coefficient of the other term the y so now you have to write it bx and here you need to write a y plus c dash equals zero and if it's plus you just have to write minus here okay if you do this you will find that m1 times m2 equals minus one so that's why i just i didn't want to discuss this because what I will generally do if I don't remember this is I will make this into this this equation I will convert into y equal to mx plus c form and then I will use let's say this is m1 m1 the other one is m2 equal to minus 1 I will find what is m2 okay so let's say now I know m2 because m1 is this one so from here I know m2 and the other equation which is like the perpendicular line of l1 I will just put m2x now I know m2 and I, instead of c I will just do c dash so basically this will be the equation of the perpendicular line but still I just gave you a forms in some problems it, it might help okay that's why I just gave you in case you can remember it, it obviously it's good and last thing that we will discuss in this class in after that we might we will probably solve some problems after that um, what is the distance between two parallel lines so one just want to check one thing so this one pq so this should be modulus okay so because i already discussed this before like you see i always said this should be modulus and that's why in the negative sign i also took it out so this pq is always modulus because distance cannot be negative right sometimes it might give you negative number so always take the modulus of a this a h plus this expression basically so because suddenly i thought okay did i write it here so it looks like i didn't write it so it should be always modulus okay so distance between two parallel lines so let's do a coordinate x y coordinate axis let's say this is a straight line L1 which is AX plus BY plus C equals 0 let's say this is another straight line which is parallel to it sorry it, it, it's not looking exactly parallel but let's consider this is parallel L2 which is AX plus BY plus C dash equals 0 okay so what is the distance between these two straight lines so how I solve this problem is um let's say this point is zero zero right this is zero zero so what is so we already discussed just now what what will be the distance of a point from a straight line perpendicular so what what will be the distance of this zero zero from this straight line so you see this is ax plus by plus c dash equals zero and this point origin is zero zero what is the distance between this straight this point and this straight line perpendicular distance it will be a times zero plus b times zero plus c dash obviously it's a, a modulus divided by root over a square plus b square so basically it is modulus c dash by root over a square plus b square okay and what is the distance between the same this origin and this straight line l1 what is this distance this distance will be same way a times 0 you see this one a times 0 plus b times 0 plus now it's instead of c it's c right c divided by root over a square plus b square so basically it's c by root over a square plus b square okay so what is this distance now which is d let's say this was d1 this was d2 so what is d now so let's say this was d1 this was d2 so d equals d1 minus d2 so it will be modulus c dash minus c equals root over a square plus b square so this is the distance between two 
parallel lines. I think we covered most of the basics of the straight lines. We will build some other concepts, but before that I will solve in the next unit, I will solve some problems to solidify all the concepts that we discussed so that you guys get a good grip on whatever we discussed right now and before we move on to difficult topics advanced yeah so okay thank you so much hope you guys enjoyed this class thank you bye